on May 30th, 2010, in the wake of one of the worst storms ever experienced in the region. A bottomless pit opened up and swallowed an entire building at an intersection in Guatemala City. This terrifying sight created a picture which would be shared far and wide, with some people saying it had been a product of Photoshop. Unfortunately, this is an entirely real photograph of an incredibly frightening phenomenon, the lingering threat of which terrorizes the residents of Guatemala City to this very day. Research in this video has given me a new fear that I've never even thought about before, but would be utterly terrifying if it happened. There isn't much that can fill me with more fear than the earth opening up and eating you. Anyway, before we dive in, I want to let you know that I make videos weekly, so if you want to see my next one, please drop the video a like and subscribe if you are new. It really helps me out. Thank you. Zona 2 of Guatemala City was a diverse area that included a mix of residential, commercial and industrial developments and housed a range of people from different socio-economic backgrounds living in a variety of housing types. The local residents had already experienced their fair share of tragedy due to a tropical storm that had ripped through the city and the eruption of the Bacaya volcano, which closed the main airport and covered the coffee fields in ash. Tropical Storm Agatha left a trail of destruction and despair across Central America in 2010. This natural disaster became the deadliest storm in the Eastern Pacific Tropical Cyclone Basin. Agatha unleashed relentless rains that inundated Central America, leading to tragic loss of life. Nicaragua mourned one fatality, and El Salvador lost 13 people, while in Guatemala, the toll was a devastating 165 lives lost and 113 individuals unaccounted for, buried beneath the landslides. The storm inflicted a staggering 1.1 billion in damages across Central America, with the government having to appeal to the UN for aid. When Zona 2 residents and the local news first heard the loud crack that split the earth and saw the ominous sinkhole that had formed in their neighborhood. They believed the storm and the resulting landslides were to blame. Though actually, this story might have begun five years earlier. Guatemala City residents began complaining of strange creaking and groaning sounds occurring underneath their homes as far back as 2005. After complaining to the authorities, it seemed nothing was done. Residents started to notice rumbling and sinking terrain. Guatemala's Seismology Institute had placed a seismic meter in the city and had planned to enter the cavity that had formed with a robotic camera system. But before they could carry out their experiment, tragedy would strike. Guatemala's first serious sinkhole happened on February 23rd, 2007. The massive sinkhole appeared in front of a neighborhood in northeastern Guatemala City. This sinkhole, reaching a depth of 100 meters, tragically claimed the lives of five people. In response, authorities evacuated around a thousand residents and established a 500-yard safety zone around the sinkhole. To address the situation, the Guatemalan government spent 2.7 million to fill the sinkhole with a special soil cement mixture, locally known as Lodcrito, 
and they had to reroute the sewage pipes away from the area. According to investigating scientists and geologists, the sinkhole was formed when sewage eroded the ground beneath the city. Safety concerns around the area were immediately reduced through better management of the city's wastewater and runoff, and plans for developing the site were suggested. However, some critics argued that the city's aging sewer system needed urgent maintenance, and they warned that similar pipe failures may occur in the future if no action was taken. Despite this loud and clear warning, the authorities failed to carry out a larger investigation into the drainage systems, the consequences of which would claim even more lives just three years later. The day before the collapse, meteorologists in Guatemala reported that over 14 inches of rainfall fell in one day. This heavy rainfall triggered several landslides, blocking roads in the southern part of the country. As conditions deteriorated, the country's officials declared a state of emergency on the afternoon of May 29th. Many rivers were on the brink of overflowing, and widespread floods destroyed many homes, which resorted in numerous emergency rescues. By the afternoon of May 30th, preliminary damage assessments revealed at least 3,500 homes were damaged and a staggering 112,000 people were evacuated. Furthermore, more than 20,000 people were left homeless in the storm's wake. In some areas, the rainfall recorded was the heaviest in over 60 years exceeding 36 inches. Agatha became known as the wettest known tropical cyclone to strike the country. During this afternoon, as residents were trying to return to normality, two girls huddled in a phone booth and felt the earth beneath their feet start to move. The nearby three-story clothing factory had closed its doors for the day just one hour earlier. A single security guard left to patrol the corridors when the building jolted beneath him. Pablo Tarasina sat at home watching television and said the feeling was similar to the one you get when a lift stops suddenly, only much stronger. There was a lot of noise and shaking and then I got out of the house. Within minutes, a sinkhole the size of the Statue of Liberty had opened up and swallowed everyone and everything within a 20 meter radius. Those trapped in buildings were likely killed instantly by falling rubble, while those on the streets would have felt the ground shifting around them and pulling them towards the black hole. The ground would have turned to a quicksand-like substance, the layers of sediment crumbling, with victims being plunged into the darkness. If an individual survived the initial fall, the smooth, wet soil around the inside of the sinkhole would be impossible to climb, just a sliver of visible sky a hundred meters above. Rescue efforts began immediately and buildings within a hundred meters of the hole were urgently evacuated. Unfortunately, despite concerted efforts to reach people sucked into the sinkhole, 15 people died, including the lone security guard and the girls in the phone booth. Pablo Tarancina was lucky enough to make it out of his house before it collapsed. The immense vertical hole wasn't a typical sinkhole, as it didn't form from the usual dissolution of limestone, dolomite, or other water-soluble rocks. Rather, it's an example of something called piping pseudocrast. This phenomenon emerged from the collapse of extensive cavities beneath the city. Despite their fragility, these volcanic deposits had just enough strength to stand as vertical structures, 
Over time, these tunnels can grow and connect, creating holes in the ground, underground voids forming as water from leaking water mains permeated the volcanic deposits, washing away fine volcanic materials and gradually eroding and removing coarser substances. Eventually, these underground voids grew so vast that their roofs collapsed, giving rise to massive holes such as this when massively disturbed by a storm. Additional pressure on the drainage system due to ash from the volcano may have also played a part. Despite this scientific explanation, speculation around the peculiar round shape of the sinkhole was rife on the internet, with some people saying it looked too uniform to be a result of crumbling. Some people suggested UFOs and aliens are using the hollowed out earth under Guatemala City as a home base, whilst others insist the correlation between this hole and others in China indicate the use of magnetic pulse weapons to blast the round holes from space. The leading theory, however, still remains that the tragedy occurred due to a mixture of poor infrastructure, unstable volcanic soils, and traumatizing tropical storm. Sinkholes in Guatemala City continue to cause devastation, with one as recently as 2022 claiming the life of a mother and daughter. Residents of the city are forced to live in a constant state of dread and vigilance, aware that at any moment, the conditions could be right for them to lose their home, car, or even their lives. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay sane.